Hi everyone, my name is Francesca Ferrando. I'm a professor of philosophy here at NYU, Program of Liberal Studies, and I'm a post human philosopher. That's why it's very exciting for me to share with you today the notion of the post human. So I'm going to address in this video the question what does post human mean? Some of you might have found the term in an article or in a video or at a conference. And may, you may have asked yourself, but what does posthuman mean? That's a very relevant question in the 21st century. And it's a question that can be addressed from a philosophical perspective in many different ways. Why is that? Because, because the posthuman is an umbrella term. Posthuman is an umbrella term that is defined by many different schools of thoughts in different ways. Which, one are, uh, which ones are these schools of thoughts that we are uh, referring to? Well, there are many. On one side, we can see, for instance, post-humanism. So post-humanism is a philosophical movement, which is happening right now, which address the topic of the posthuman. We can also think of transhumanism. Now, when I'm talking about posthumanism and transhumanism, don't think that these are only one specific movement. I should address them in plural, like posthumanisms and transhumanisms, because each of them is, uh, um, is, uh, it, it's, uh, is made, is um, developed by very different schools of thought within. For instance, according to uh, transhumanism, we have uh, democratic transhumanism, we have libertarian transhumanism, We have extropianism, we have the singularity, and so on. So you can see already that this movement is one but many. That's why I'm talking about transhumanisms. Although all these school of thoughts do share some of the same uh, notions that we're going to uh, see more deeply in the second video of this mini series. What about posthumanism? Also, posthumanism is not one but many. We should refer to posthumanisms. We can think of critical posthumanism. We can think of cultural posthumanism. We can think of philosophical posthumanism, among others. Um, and I'm going to refer to these uh, um, other movements uh, in the third part of this mini series, mini lecture. There are other movements here. We can think of anti humanism. As well, not one but many. There is uh, Marxist anti humanism, there, is, uh, there are many different types of anti humanism as well. We can think of new materialism. We can think of metahumanism and so on. Now, is this confusing? Yes, a little bit. Is this exciting? Of course it is. It is very exciting to reflect on a topic that is happening right now. Why there are so many different groups uh, of people thinking about this topic? Because the posthuman is the way that is redefined the notion of the human in the 21st century. So why does the notion of the human doesn't really, why the human doesn't really reflect anymore uh, who we are in the 21st century? Uh, we are going to talk about specifically um, the human as a notion that is open. Uh, so all these mov movements share something in common, share the idea that the human as a closed notion does not reflect anymore who we are. The human is an open notion, is an open notion. 
Uh, it's an open notion. You can think through uh, the notion of evolution, for instance. And we uh, can bring into the discussion Darwin. We can think of uh, an, as an open notion through technology, for instance, and the notion of the cyborg. As a simple example, think of someone with a pacemaker. We are talking about a human being who needs a piece of technology in order to survive. Now, is this person a human? Yes, it is. Is this person a cyborg? On some level, it is as well, because we have some biology that needs some technology in order to survive. The term cyborg comes from two terms, which are cybernetic on one side and on the other side, organism. Um, we can think, for instance, of ecology and the notion of Anthropocene, which is the era in which we are living. The idea that the human is not disconnected from the biosphere, from ecology. Ecology comes from Greek, logi, logos, the discourse on, echo comes from oikos, hmm? oikos, which means house, oikos. So, oikos, the house, the home, the place we inhabit. Mm? So, on one side, we are affecting the ecosphere. The Anthropocene shows clearly that human habits are affecting the, the everything else. We are in relation to all the other species, to the planet as a whole. And on the other side is that we are affected by the environment. Again, think through Darwin, think to the notion of uh, adaptation. So, our um, adaptation is an important notion here. So, the fact that our species is as such because of planet Earth, because has adapted to planet Earth. So, going back to our uh, very uh, interesting open scenario, uh, we have many different schools of thoughts that are addressing the notion of the posthuman. We are going to go now into transhumanism or transhumanisms, what does this school of thought uh, offer to the philosophical debate? And on the uh, video after that, we're going to talk about posthumanism. Uh, my name is Francesca Ferrando. You can find more information about these topics on my uh, website, which is www.deposthuman.org. Thank you so much for your kind attention.